John Fowler, focus on a local inventor and engineer as part of British Science Week. John Fowler, inventor and engineering pioneer, was born in Melksham on the 11th of July, 1826. His father, John Fowler Sr, was a wealthy Quaker merchant. When he left school, John followed his father's wishes and began working for a local corn merchant. But when he came of age in 1847, he turned his back on the corn business and followed his heart into the engineering firm of Gilks Wilson and Company of Middlesbrough. Amongst other things, the company was involved in building steam locomotives and colliery winding engines, a stationary engine that was used to control a cable. John might have remained with the Middlesbrough firm and made his reputation there, had it not been for a chance visit to Ireland in 1849. It was the time of the terrible Irish potato famine, a period of mass starvation and disease leading to a death toll of one million. Irish agriculture depended on the potato crop, but much of the land was uncultivated due to poor drainage. This experience affected John, and he was convinced that there must be a way of bringing more of this uncultivated land into production. The normal way to drain agricultural land was to use a mole plough. The mole plough has a vertical blade to cut deep into the soil, with a cylindrical mole attached to the bottom. The mole is pointed at the front end, and as it moves through the soil, it leaves a horizontal subterranean channel into which porous drainage pipes can be laid. It was hard work, however, dragging a deeply embedded plough, and the size of the plough was limited by the strength of the teams of horses that pulled it. John returned to England with a new sense of purpose there had to be a better way. He developed a horse-powered ploughing engine that dragged itself across the field on rollers, pulling the mole plough as it went. The mole had a string of drainage pipes attached at the rear end that would be dragged through the channel created by the mole, thereby eliminating the need for them to be manually laid. It was an ingenious labour-saving invention, and John decided to demonstrate it at a meeting of the Royal Agricultural Society of England at Exeter in 1850. He was able to lay a drain at a depth of two feet six inches in heavy clay. His invention was awarded a silver medal and was reported as altogether the most important feature of the exhibition. Impressive, but John knew improvements could be made. He changed his design so that his team of horses drove a stationary winch which dragged only the plough across the field rather than the ploughing engine as well, vastly reducing the horse's exertion, a win-win battle for both the farmer and his beasts. John demonstrated his new drainage plough at the Great Exhibition in 1851 and at the Royal Agricultural Society of England meeting at Gloucester in 1853, where he was awarded another silver medal. This time he was able to lay drains to a depth of three feet six inches. In 1852, John turned his attention to using steam engines rather than horses. Unfortunately, his early experiments were a failure as the steam engine proved to be too heavy to move easily over soft ground. However, John was awarded patent number 480 for improvements in machinery for draining land, believed to be one of the first patents for the use of steam power in agriculture. John persevered and over the years he continued to adjust his steam powered plough design, knowing it to be superior to the horse drawn ploughs. He just needed to convince the rest of the country. 
John won many prizes for his increasingly improving invention over the years. And between 1850 and 1864, he took out in his own name and in partnership with other persons, 32 patents for agricultural apparatus and other inventions. In 1863, John finally made it when John Fowler and Company was formed. John's ploughing sets were sold all over the world. Not only that, but these inventions were responsible for bringing land into production that was previously unable to be cultivated. In all this excitement, however, John was neglecting his health. He was advised to take more rest and was persuaded to take up hunting as a way of getting exercise. Whilst out with the hunt, he had a fall and fractured his arm. It was as he was recovering from this that he tragically developed tetanus and died on the 4th of December 1864 at his home in Ackworth, aged just 30. There's no denying that John was passionately determined to see his invention go far, knowing that it could help so many people. Sadly, he didn't get to see just how enduring his method of ploughing became, continuing well into the 20th century until the internal combustion engine allowed the development of the tractors we know today.